Blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray you're having a a good evening this evening. This is just a little devotion that I've been doing uh, out of the Psalms for Wednesday night, uh, June the 10th. And uh, the subject is really what to do in times like these, in times that we live in. It's some gleanings from Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 through 13, if you'd like to read through that or or go back to that, and I'd encourage you to do that. Psalm chapter chapter 9, just verses 1 through 13 because of time. It's a psalm of David, and David's life was full of troubles. And kind of we need to be thankful to God for that, because it was through his troubles that he turned to poetry and lyric music to get away from and to turn his mind to God, all the things that were pressing in around him as king. He had problems outside in the kingdom. He had problems inside his government. He had problems inside his own family. And, of course, his own personal struggles in his own personal life. So the Psalms, for that reason, are full of principles for facing the challenges that life can present us with. Hopefully not as many challenges as David was pressed upon. But in Psalm 9, there are five principles that we can glean from it about facing Tough times, times like these that, that we live in with this uh, this whole sickness that's going around. And uh, reading verses 1 and 2, the first thing is worship. When all these things were pressing in around David, this is what we read. For the director of music, verses 1 and 2, to the tune of the death of a son. Sounds like almost a funeral dirge. A psalm of David. And, and David, in the midst of all turmoils and, and trials and pressure, he says... Um, there in, in verse 1, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When everything is pressing in around us, turn away from it. Turn to God and worship Him. He never changes. With all my heart. You see, we can get so caught up in the things and the worries of this world and voices speaking in our ears and televisions and radios and, and, and headlines and newspapers and all kinds of stuff. No, no, no. Stop. Turn with all your heart to the Lord. Think about Him, who He is, and who you are to Him. Tell of His wonders, how He sent His Son to die for your sins, to forgive you, to make you to turn and think about Him and all the beauty of His creation around you. I will be glad and rejoice in you. He's not being glad and rejoicing in this world. He didn't have much to be glad about and rejoice in this world. But he can be glad and rejoice in the wonders of God and his most high God. And then I will sing praise to your name. There he goes, that poet, that musician. Praising God in the midst of turmoil. O most high. You see, he's not talking about... we, We use the word happiness a lot. And I've told you before... Happiness, the word comes from happenings. See, we we think that things that happen around us and happen in this world, we draw our happiness from that. Well, then you're not going to have much happiness. But, But when it talks about rejoicing in the Lord, it is a joy, a gladness. He says, I will be glad and rejoice in you. That's where it's focused at, not in this world, not in the happenings of this world. The happenings of this world go from bad to worse sometimes. Don't rejoice in those things. Rejoice in God who never changes. His love for you, his great salvation. So when David was down, he turned to worship. And it lifted him up. Now, how can he do that? Well, part of this process of worship and turning to God is is you come to the realization, God's got this old world. He's got all the problems and the troubles. He's working in and through it, his divine will. Verses 7 through 9 says, The Lord reigns forever. As crazy and as out of control as this Lord, as this old world looks like, remember, the Lord is on the throne. Oh yeah, the heathen rage, the nations rage, they imagine a vain thing. God in the heaven says he laughs. And he says, kiss the sun, embrace the sun. And that's what that's what David is doing. We gotta remember that our lives are not out of control. This world is not out of control. God is our constant refuge. How? Because God's got this. The Lord reigns forever. He has established His throne for judgment. Judgment, that's justice, holiness, 
righteousness, which is perfect. He's going to take care of all this in his time. He has a plan. Rest in his plan. He will govern the people with justice. He'll do what's right. In this world, you're not going to find much justice, if any. But in God, you will. But you got to wait on him. Wait in his time. He will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. In times of trouble, times of oppression, run to the Lord. Knowing that he is on his throne and perfect justice will be dispensed. And worship him. Take your mind off all these terrible things and just turn them over, over to God. Which brings me to the third point in these four principles. Just trust him. And that's so hard some for us sometimes. But just give it up and give it to him. Verses 10 and 11. Those who know your name. We've talked about that thing about name. Those who know who God truly is in all of his aspects. God's name is singular, but he's wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. He has lots of names. El Shaddai. When you, when you begin to learn and have a relationship with him and learn about his full nature, his name, who he is, those who know who God really is as he has revealed himself in his word and through Jesus Christ will trust in you. When God is high and lifted up in your life and you know him fully in a big way, you can't help but trust him. For those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Never. Sing praises to the Lord, enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. Again, turn your thoughts from this old world. Worship him. Realize he's got it. His throne is forever. And just trust him. He's, he's got this. Our job is not to worry about all this stuff in this old world. Our job is to love him, to serve him, and to praise him. And then comes the joy and the freedom from all the chains that this old world would put on us and on our minds. And then finally, fourthly, and of course it all goes together, just pray. Sit down, trust in the Lord, worship in Him, and give all them troubles to God. Verse 13, O Lord, it's a prayer. O Lord, he cries out, see how my enemies persecute me. And we could substitute for that word enemies our trials, our weaknesses, our struggles. See how life persecutes me. Have mercy. Because we know he's a merciful God. That's part of his name. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. When we feel down so low that we think we're going to die, turn to God in prayer and he will lift us up. In conclusion, this little devotion, again, as you throw these things around and think about it, four simple principles. What to do in times like these? Worship. Worship with your whole heart. Recount the wonders of, of God and rejoice in them and, and be glad in Him, not in this old world. I'll let you gather your joy from the Lord and who He is to you and what He has done for you. And then remember, He's got this. I mean, He rules forever. The world is not out of control. Just relax. His judgment is going to come and is coming. And he is the only just and righteous God. And what he's going to do is going to be right. For there is none right or just like God. And just trust him. Just give it up in prayer, which was the last principle. And just pray and trust him and let him take care of the heavy stuff. When you're feeling low, you feel you're in the pits. You feel like death is surrounding your door. Just give it all to God and let him take care of it. That's Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 through 13, about what to do uh, in times like this. The Lord bless you.